Hey everyone, Mr. Newman here. We're going to do a quick recap on function transformations. That way we're all on the same page with how we talk about it. And I have some little tips and tricks for how to remember some of these things more easily. So first of all, one other piece of advice I want to give you is if you put these four functions into Desmos, um, you can do you type in all these things that we type in here. And for example, in the first one, when I say f of x, plus A, you can type that into Desmos and make a slider and see this in real time. And that's a lot, uh, a lot more effective than just seeing me drawing it. And I would do that with all these because some of them, for example, all the absolute value and the X squared especially, it's hard to tell whether you're stretching it vertically or horizontally, but, but the uh, X cubed and even better is the sine of X. If you type those in, that's really, really good to see. So um, let's go ahead and look at this first of all. Um, I want to talk about the notation f of x. You guys know that the inside the parentheses is the input and outside the parentheses is the output. In, out, okay? Um, this is going to be the most helpful thing for transformations because whenever you do something to the input, that's the x uh, in the x direction, then you're going to change the input. When you do something to the output, that's the y direction, you're going to change something to the output. So every time you do a function transformation, you want to ask, am I affecting the input, the x, or the output, the y? When we are translating up, that up is an output change because up and down is in the y direction. So we're going to change the output by adding plus a on the outside. Now one little caveat, uh, so you can see what, let's say a was 2 in this case, uh, you'd uh, translate that up, you slide it up to, and it looked like that. We gotta make sure A is bigger than zero, because if it's not, then it's kinda like we're subtracting. So that's just a side note. But um, yeah, whenever you add something positive to a function on the outside of the function, it will shift that function up. Um, how, uh, translating right, on the other hand, right is an input direction, because that's in the x direction. So instead of putting it outside the parentheses, we're gonna put that inside the parentheses. Now one thing, uh, two things you should notice. Notice first of all the x minus a is inside the parentheses, that's an input. The other thing you notice is we have a subtraction sign there. The reason for that is because, and I want you to remember this expression because this is gonna come in helpful a lot, the input always seems to do the opposite of what you expect, okay? So if you expect subtraction to go left, subtraction is going to go right, just because it's the input. The output always does what you expect, but the input always does the opposite of what you expect. And if you remember this for all the inputs, for adding, uh, for going left and right, for uh, dilating horizontally and shrinking it horizontally, you're going to see it always applies, okay? So the input does the opposite of what you expect. Once again, we want uh, A to be greater than zero, and you notice if you subtract a positive number, then you are moving the function to the right translating it. All right, uh, right here we have an output and an input. We always want to think about that. So down is an output direction. So that's going to be outside the function. So f of x and on the outside I'm going to put minus a. And once again I just want to make sure a is greater than zero in this case. Um, otherwise we're subtracting a negative and that'd be like adding. Um, that is notice on the outside so it's an output and it's going to look something like that. That's just a specific example where uh, or uh, a is 2. And um, on the right here, if we want to translate left, just remember the input is the opposite of what you expect. So if you think left is negative, which it is, instead of subtracting, we're actually going to be adding because we're doing the opposite. So f of x plus a, where a is greater than 0, and it's going to look like a shift like that. All right, let's do some stretching and shrinking. So First, once again, label output and input, the x and the y. Um, vertically, that's up and down. That's going to be an output change. So we're going, to do, we're going to multiply or divide on the outside of the function. Now, stretching, you think stretching means getting bigger. That is correct. That is going to be multiplication by a number bigger than 1. Okay, So something like a times f of x. Um, it's important for a to be bigger than 1 because if a is less than 1, if it's like a decimal, like 0.5, that is going to be kind of like dividing, right? Multiplying by half is the same as dividing by 2. So only, in, and when you multiply any number by 
a number smaller than one, you're actually shrinking the number. So it makes, uh, it makes sense here that A has to be bigger than one because we're making it larger. And when you do that, um, I want you guys to notice that all the stretching occurs from the axis. So when we're stretching it vertically, it's going to stretch away from the x-axis. So notice this, each of these points, the point, uh, the y value of negative 1 becomes negative 2. The y value of negative 2 becomes negative 4, and that's true for each of those. Uh, if the value is 0, if it's already on the x-axis, 0 stays 0 because anything times 0 is 0. So um, those stretching away from the x-axis, those points actually stay the same. And for example, 3, a y value of 3 would stretch up to 6. So this is a special situation where a is equal to 2. But um, you can take whatever you have and multiply each of those numbers by whatever a is, and you can figure out all of the new points. So that stretches away from the axis, and it looks something like that. Do you notice how it looks now? Notice below the x-axis, it gets further away by going down. Above the x-axis, it gets further away from the x-axis by going up. Okay, So that's uh, stretching it vertically. Stretching horizontally, that's an input change because we're going left and right. And remember that input is always the opposite. So if you think stretching means multiplying, well, we're going we're gonna to need to do the opposite. We're going to need to divide instead. And there's two ways to do this. You can say, remember, horizontally is input, so these are happening inside the parentheses. You can say x over a, or you can say 1 over a times x. Those both mean the same thing. And as long as a is greater than 1, then they are both dividing by a number that's going to... Um, you would think shrink the inside, but it's actually stretching it horizontally. So if A was 2, for example, it would look something like this. Notice this time, because it's a horizontal stretch, we're, we're um, stretching away from the y-axis. And so like the point 2 comma 0 goes to 4 comma 0, and an x value of 3 goes to 6, and an x value of negative 1 goes to negative 2, and so on and so forth, getting away from the y-axis. All right, let's look at shrinking vertically. For, vertically is an output value again. So we're going to be thinking up and down, and we're going to be doing something to the outside of the function. Shrinking, uh, we're going to multiply by a fraction or multiply by a number less than 1 or between 0 and 1. So um, I'm going to write it like this, 1 over a times f of x or f of x divided by a, and that's where a is greater than 1. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, let's look what, see what that happens. If uh, a is 2, we're going to get closer to the x-axis this time. And so I'm going to move everything halfway towards the x-axis. So you see a y value on the far left of negative 4. That's going to become negative 2. A y value of negative 2 becomes negative 1. And negative 1 becomes negative 1 half. On the right over there, all the way to the right, you notice a y value of 3 becomes 1 and a half, because that's half of 3. And you plot all those points, you notice it gets closer to the x-axis. Um, right here, horizontal shrink, oh, shrinking horizontally is an input change. So we're going to affect inside the parentheses. And just remember, input is the opposite. So if you think, okay, we're shrinking it, we need to divide. Nope, it's the opposite. We need to multiply. And so, in fact, you can test this out on Desmos. Oops, there's a little typo. There we go. Fix that. So a times x should be inside the parentheses because it is horizontal. And when you do this, notice if I make all those points half as close to the y-axis, then we have a horizontal shrink. And so this would be an example where a is equal to 2. And you notice, for example, um, an x value of negative 4 becomes negative 2. And the x value of 3 over there becomes 1 and a half. So that works just... Uh, just fine, and you can see it pretty clearly getting closer to the y-axis. All right, two last things I want to show you are uh, reflection on the x-axis. You can think of that as a vertical stretch by negative 1. It's kind of like you're stretching it up and down, but you're by multiplying by negative 1, you're flipping it over the x-axis. Um, so what that becomes is negative f of x, because it's a vertical stretch, it's affecting the output, the outside. So I put the negative on the outside, and it looks something like this. You notice how each of those just flipped, and the, the y values, because it's an output change, the y values all became the opposite. So a y value of negative 4 became 4, a y value of 1 became negative 1, and 0 stayed the same. 
on the y-axis reflection, that's kind of like a horizontal stretch by negative 1. So I'm going to put the negative in front of the x on the inside of the parentheses. And what that does is that makes all the x values become the opposite. So an x value of negative 2 becomes positive 2, an x value of positive 3 becomes negative 3, and of course the x value of 0 at the origin in this case stays 0. Alright, thank you guys for watching.